One year ago, Lake Mead was at an all-time low of 1,040 feet MSL, the lowest it's ever been since the 1930s when the lake was first being formed due to the construction of Hoover Dam. Now at that particular point in time, there were a lot of talk about what the ramifications would be if Hoover Dam were to hit Deadpool and the impacts it would have on the southwest if the water levels continued to drop at the rate they did last year. Now obviously things out here have changed quite a bit due to all the snow melts, and if you've watched my previous videos, you'll know I've been documenting how far the water levels have come up. In today's video, I'm going to show you some before and after photos, and we're going to visit a few iconic locations around the lake, starting with the speedboat. And there she is, boys and girls the famous speedboats of Lake Mead. This boat first started making headlines about one year ago when one of the very first photos of this surfaced online of a couple scuba divers swimming around the area. And then it was maybe about a month later when you could actually walk all the way down and around down there. So it's crazy to kind of see it come full circle. And if we look over here, you can no longer see the island that used to be here. I'll show you guys some before and after photos here, but there used to be an island that was right here that you could almost damn near walk out to from all the way over there. And I guess if you look pretty closely, you can still see some weeds on the top of that island that are just barely creeping out of the surface. It's really nice to see the lake like this, and there was actually a bunch of boats over there that I discovered. Well, I wouldn't say I discovered them, a lot of people found them, but I came across last year. Just thinking back to one of the very first times that I came out here, the water was just about up to like the bottom of the boat, and it was pretty wet and soft around there, so you couldn't necessarily walk out to it. People did, but they either fell in and sunk in up to like their knees or their waist, which probably wasn't the smartest thing to do, but then it was only a matter of a couple of weeks later when you could actually walk out to that boat and all this area that you see behind me over here was just sand and weeds. A whole lot can change within a year. It's been a pretty mellow morning so far. I think right now it's about 102 degrees, but it's about 9, 30, 10 o'clock in the morning as of right now. So hopefully we can visit all these locations and see everything that we want to see before the intensity of that heat really starts to sink in. So I tried to take a shortcut to get back to my car and uh, this is what happened next. Let it be said that uh, Lake Mead can be very unforgiving at times. These actually aren't coming off too difficult, Ugh. but they suck. Lesson learned, watch where you're going, son of a- Next, we are gonna make our way out to Boulder Harbor. And this is an area where I've showcased quite a few before and after photos of Lake Mead. And I think a lot of people really appreciate those before and after photos because it kind of gives you a better perspective on just how far the waters really come up rather than just saying, oh, the water level increased by 10 feet in the last two months. So hopefully we get out there and we can get some good shots and uh, hopefully it ain't too hot because we're already starting to sizzle. In the 45 minutes or so that I was at Government Wash, the temperature had already gone up a couple degrees, and with temps expected to hit a high of 109 with very little cloud cover, I knew I was going to be in for a brutal awakening, and according to Fox5Vegas.com, published July 13, Southern Nevada Health District reports 7 heat-related deaths this year. We'll touch base on this topic again later on in the video. I think right now it's right around 107, 108 degrees, and it feels a lot hotter right now because I'm down here and you can just feel all the heat coming off the rock and the concrete. But as hot as I am, I would never ever go swimming in Las Vegas wash. Trust me, you, you want no part of that. Back on June 1st, 2023, about 900,000 gallons of sewage spilled from a sewage station near Las Vegas, and 10% of the sewage made its way into the Las Vegas wash, where it was eventually carried out to Lake Mead. 282,000 gallons of the sewage was recovered, while the remaining liquid poop seeped into the ground. Ugh. And if you think that stinks, it took cleanup crews nearly two days to respond to the scene. And according to ReviewJournal.com, the reason for the delay was, quote, 
primarily due to the fact that the exact location of the spill occurred outside of the perimeter of the lift station itself and outside of the view of the district staff. End quote. Hmm, that sounds a little fishy to me, but you guys let me know what you think in the comments section down below. Thinking back on it now, it probably wasn't the best idea to hike the Las Vegas Wash when it's triple digit temps out here. But then again, I've lived in the coldest places in the United States and the hottest. And I know you guys really appreciate hearing about Lake Mead and the updates and checking out the surrounding area. So doing it all for you. <laughs> well, that's an interesting subject. Who just leaves a boat on the side of the road? I mean, I've seen some weird stuff out here. Never know what the backstory could be to that one. You really never know what you're gonna find out here at Lake Mead. Bodies, boats, swimming stuff, sky's the limit. So I thought this was pretty interesting. So we're here at Boulder Beach and you actually used to be able to drive through this little gate right here and when the water levels were a lot lower, there was a parking lot down there and all these like bathrooms and life jacket racks and whatnot, they were further down the beach but because the waters increased so dramatically, they've had to push the parking lot back quite a bit. Haven't seen this in a long time. We started off July at Lake Mead with the water level at 1,056 feet MSL, and it looks like we are going to be ending the month at 1,060 feet. Last year at this time, the water level was at an alarming 1,040 feet, the lowest it's been since the 1930s, a solid 20 foot climb in the last year. Now the reason I wanted to come out here is because I wanted to climb that little mountain right there to get some before and after photos, and there's a boat kind of just sticking out of the water over there that I wanted to see what it looked like because I saw some photos on Instagram and people were saying that it's just barely sticking out of the water. All right, so this is about as close as we're going to be able to get to that boat. But at one point in time, that boat was fully on land and probably at least 30 to 40 feet away from the lake. And of course, with the lake levels rising, that's what it looks like now. Holy F and S, we made it. It's like 109 degrees out, but we made it. So we're gonna snap some photos, show you the before and afters, and get the hell out of here and get to the next destination. Before I made my way to the next destination, I had to take a break. That heat started to hit me and I started to get lightheaded and I was not feeling good. Let this be a reminder, the desert heat is no joke. Listen to your body and always stay hydrated. Recently I've been seeing articles pop up online saying that this is the hottest the earth has been in the last 120,000 years and it's just getting started. Now most of you may not know this, but I do live in Phoenix, Arizona, and we've been breaking records for having the most days of 115 plus degree weather, and it sucks. Now depending on where you live in the southwest, you may be getting a little bit of a break here from this extreme heat very soon. As for others, I wouldn't turn down the AC just yet. There's still plenty of summer left. We had to beat the heat for a few minutes, so we went to McDonald's and I got an ice cream and a burger, but now we're gonna make our way out to Echo Bay. It's a little bit of a drive, but I'm really eager to see how things look out there, so let's go.
All right, everybody, so now we are at Echo Bay. And like I said, it's quite a bit of a drive. And we came out here because I wanted to show you one cool thing real quick. So right behind me is an old resort that opened up, well, quite a long time ago. And it closed, I think sometime in the early 2000s. I'll have to correct myself here by putting a little caption. But I also made a video on this as well too, a full length video that kind of talks about the history. And if you want to see that video, click the card in the upper right hand corner. But the reason why I wanted to come out here is because I wanted to show you how far the water used to come up to, to the resort. And of course, right here we have the resort. And the water that you see way out there used to actually come up just a little bit above that red fence. Kind of like where that little trail is. The water used to come up all the way to about right here. That was way back in the day. And you can see by the video here, the water has receded quite a bit. Now I didn't expect it to come all the way up here with all the snow melt that we've had this year, but I still wanted to come out and show you guys that. We're gonna drive a little further out that way in a bit and just kind of see what it looks like out there compared to the last time I came out here. Now a couple people mentioned in one of my previous videos that they're actually getting ready to tear down this old resort. Now I didn't really believe it at first because I was like why would they tear it down? I know they put fencing up here and you can probably see it behind me and I thought that was just to keep out you know content creators like me because a lot of people used to kind of sneak in there and make videos for YouTube. And there are a bunch of trespassing signs that say you know no trespassing keep out you'll be prosecuted but hey it is what it is. But after seeing this over here we got these little shipping containers slash trailers over here and i'm assuming that's going to kind of be the offices for when they start bringing in excavators and tearing this bad boy down there's a lot of videos on youtube that you can find of people exploring this place in its entirety which is pretty cool but i think the even cooler part is the stories that people have from when this place used to be open when the water line went down so did business all right, so we just made it to the launch ramp at Echo Bay, and things definitely look a little different compared to the last time I came out here. Let's go explore. So the last time I came out here, or I should say one of the first times I came out here, this dock that you see right here, surrounded by sand and dirt and mostly garbage. You know, all things considered, besides the scorching hot temperatures out here and uh, my AC not working the best, it's still a visually beautiful day. The water has that emerald color. It's just a great day. Man, this bathtub ring over here is huge. Just goes to show you though, as much water that we've received ever since, you know, snow melt season, it's still not enough to restore this back to its original state from when it was originally full. Still got a long ways to go. And here's an even better perspective. There's the resort, boat ramp, and the water just cuts off right there. Water's definitely come up over there a little bit though too, because you can see the weeds that are kind of poking out of the water over there. I just put my hands in the water a little bit just to see how cold it was. And of course, right there at the shoreline, it's actually fairly warm. But I'm sure the further you go out and the further you go under, temperature drops quite a bit. Now one of the last few times I came out here, I noticed there was a boat that was kind of wedged up there somewhere in the bathtub ring. And I've been looking for the past few minutes here and I cannot seem to find it. I know the water line has come up quite a bit, but I don't think it's come up that far to kind of bring the boat back into the lake. Should have worn my glasses, dang it. <laughs> 